Hello, my friends. I hope you're having an amazing day. My name is Ezra Anderson, and today we're going to take this photo and apply a perspective bending effect to it. If you'd like to follow along with the same image I'll be using, I'll leave a download link in the video description. The first thing we need to do for our perspective bending effect is duplicate our background image twice, which we can do by pressing Command or Control J two times. Then we'll press V for the Move tool. We're going to flip our top layer horizontally, which we can do by right-clicking on it and then going down to Transform, Flip Horizontal. Then we're going to rotate it 90 degrees. To rotate an image, you can click and drag on this handle above the image. To keep your rotation in 15 degree increments, you can hold down shift as you're clicking and dragging. Then we'll line up the bottom left part of this layer with the bottom left of the original photo. Now we'll make a selection using the pen tool, so I'll press P for the pen tool. Then I'll click once at the top left to lay down my first node, and then come down to the bottom to lay my second node. Then we'll place our third node at the top right of the rotated layer. Then we'll press on the first node to close up our path. To turn this path into a selection, all we need to do is press Selection in the Context Toolbar. And now this is where the magic happens. We're going to turn our selection into a mask by pressing on the mask icon. With our mask applied, you can really begin to see how the perspective bending effect is going to happen. I'll press Command or Control D to deselect so you can see a little bit better. Now we're going to do the exact same thing, but for the right side of the image. I'll select the other duplicate copy of our background image that we made, and then press V for the Move tool. Once again, we'll right click and go to Transform Flip Horizontal, but this time we'll rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise. Remember to hold down Shift to keep your rotation in 15 degree increments. Then we'll position the bottom right part of this layer at the bottom right of the original image. And once again, we'll press P for the pen tool, and we'll make another triangle for our selection. This time we'll start at the top right, and then come down to the bottom right, and then go over to the top left. Then we'll close up our path and turn it into a selection. And now we'll turn this selection into another mask. Then you can press Command or Control D to deselect. Already, you can see how the perspective bending effect is really starting to take place. Now that the main part of the effect is done, we just need to do a little finessing to make it look even better. The first thing we need to do is remove any repeating patterns. It doesn't look very good right now having the same shack three times in the photo. We can see more repeating patterns on the edge of our perspective bending. You can see the field on the right side and this field on the left side are identical. And the same thing can be seen over here on the right side. To fix these, we're going to use the in-painting brush. To select the in-painting brush, we're just going to click and hold on this little band-aid icon and then select in-painting brush tool. To make it easier to see what we're doing, I'm going to close up both of these groups and then I'll give them a name so we can tell what layer we're working on. We can see this top layer is affecting the left side, so I'll double click on the word background and name it left. And then this layer is affecting the right side, so I'll double click on the word background and name it right. We'll start off by working on the right side, so make sure you have the right layer selected. Then with the in painting brush tool selected, make sure your hardness is set to 100% in the context toolbar. We'll also want to make our brush a little bit bigger, which you can do up in the context toolbar, or you can use the right and left bracket key underneath the equal sign on your keyboard. Then I'm just going to paint over this shack to remove it from the photo. 
And just like magic, the inpainting brush has taken care of it. If you'd like to learn more about how the inpainting brush tool works, I'll leave a link in the video description for our complete beginner's guide to Affinity Photo, where we cover all of the most important tools in this program. If we come over here to the left side though and begin painting, you'll notice that nothing happens. That's because we still have the right layer selected. So we need to select the left layer and then we can paint to remove this shack. I'm also going to remove the repeating pattern along the edge by painting over this part of the field. And don't worry about painting onto the original part of the picture when you're working on the left and right side. Because we have the left layer selected, it will only let us paint on the left side. You can see if I try painting over here, it keeps me on the left side and won't let me paint onto the original part of the picture. I don't think I love the way that's looking though, so I'm going to press Command or Control Z to undo. Then I'm gonna come over to the right side by clicking on the right layer, and then I'll paint on this field to get rid of this repeating pattern. I don't really like the way the in painting brush removed this repeating pattern, so I'm going to press Command or Control Z to undo and try painting over part of it again. I think the in painting brush did a much better job that time, and that's the beauty of this tool. You can always press Command or Control Z to undo and then try painting again. Finally, we're going to add some shadows going along the edge of our perspective bending. To do this, we'll select the background image and then press B for the paintbrush. Make sure that you're painting in black and your hardness is set to 0%. Then to keep our painting non-destructive, we'll add a new pixel layer and paint on that layer instead of the original photo. To add a new pixel layer, we can press on the icon next to the trash can. Now with our new pixel layer, we can begin painting in black along the edge to create a shadow. Obviously the shadow is looking a little too strong right now, so let's lower its opacity to 20%. Now we have a nice shadow going along the edge of our perspective bending. It's the subtle details like these that really help to make an effect like this convincing. You'll notice we have a slight problem though in that our shadow is going a little past where it should. To fix this, I'm going to select the eraser tool and then zoom in to the problem. Then I'll make the eraser a little bit bigger in the context toolbar and begin painting to remove the shadow. Then I'll press Command or Control Zero to see the entire photo. That's looking much better. Now let's add a shadow to the other side. So I'll press B for the paintbrush and begin painting on the left side. Because this layer's opacity is already set to 20%, our shadow is already looking good. We can see how the shadow is enhancing our picture by turning the pixel layer off and on. To see a before and after of our effect, I'm going to hold down Shift and click on the top layer, and then press Command or Control G to group them. Then we can turn off this group to see the original photo, and here it is with the perspective bending effect. Now that you know the technique of how to do perspective bending, try using one of your own photos and see what amazing results you can create. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.